Hey, and welcome, Miss Kira Speaks. Please stick around to the end, and I see you watching, so go ahead and subscribe and turn on those notifications, because we're here for another episode of Growing Up Hip Hop, season seven, episode four, Tuck and Roll. No, Egypt and Sam, this episode, yay. So we open the episode with Twist and Sean. What an odd couple to put together, but I do like Twist and I do love to look at Sean. So they're in the car and they're chopping it up and they're talking about how the panorama has affected Sean's business. He works in Jamaica and for five months, he wasn't able to get there. They've kind of put down their roots in LA but he and Titi have been flying back and forth and you know, making it work for Laith so they could all be together. Sean, he's not really feeling LA and I'm not sure if it's the travel time or the vibe or the cost of living there, but that's not what they're there for. They're headed off to get Sean's hairline fixed, I guess. So we get there and it's a black doctor. Come on, black doctor. And it's gonna cost him $20,000 to get that hairline filled in. Go ahead and get your coin, sir. But he's gonna keep it from TT because he says, this will give her an excuse to buy something expensive or cut into her shoe budget. I can't remember what he said. We later see him and TT and their house shopping. And the house that they're at, I meant to go back and take a look and see how it looked because TT was like, this is depressing. And the realtor tells them that the house is 3.7. Yes, 3.7 million. What I do remember is when they went in the backyard, that Sean was like, I can see the neighbors right there, and I can see the neighbors right there. And the real estate lady was trying to explain to him that you're basically paying for location. She gives him a minute to talk, and it sounds like they may either have to go up on their budget and cut back on Tara's shoe allowance. We'll see how that works or maybe pick another area because I guess this is like, you know, prime location. Sean's basically like, it's all on you. So when you're ready, let me know and I'll be ready too. And I don't know, I kind of like that. So Tanise, she meets poolside with Miss Vanessa. The whole conversation, it was basically just small talk. She was asking Vanessa if she was gonna have another baby and we can't even get homeboy on the show or a clip of her house and we barely see the daughter that they have. But I digress. You know Vanessa's only gonna give you but so much and I wish she would give us more. She was on monogamy and she was really good on that even though that's done, but you're an actress. And speaking of actress, Vanessa is again stressing about his her weight. Every single season we have to see Vanessa worry about her weight. And I'm getting kind of tired of it. Just a little bit. Love Vanessa, but Vanessa may just need to go to a therapist and get her mind right her money right ready for war because she and i shouldn't say this because if i don't i don't have a sister but if somebody was comparing me to my sibling she kind of needs to be a little bit more in the flame frame of angela because angela's body's not perfect but angela's thick and that body looks good and she don't give a care and that's kind of where i need vanessa to be but i get it vanessa used to model and she's an actress <sighs> it's a lot I just wanted to get her self-esteem up. I know what that feels like for that self-esteem not to be where you, you know, where you want it to be, but she's got to get it up. She's got a little mommy pooch. I mean, she claims she's working out hard and she wants to get Triscope. And I can't remember if it was her or Angela that went to go to see, went to go see a lipo person on another season. In any case, she doesn't want everything. She just, you know, wants a little tighten up. And Denise is talking to her about her previously having a mommy makeover, which we knew from another season. And she's putting her onto game. She's dropping, dropping some gems and letting her know you have to make sure you, you know, get everything drains properly and you get those massages so your body is not looking lumpy. Lumpy. We don't want to waste that coin, okay? And I thank Tanisa for giving that great advice. And I do believe that Cree provides a service like that. Like one of her businesses, while they say Cree's not working, is that she does post op for people who have done, you know, lipo and these cosmetic surgeries, cause she's had it. And I do remember her saying that mas that the massage was important. It was on somebody's YouTube channel. I can't remember if it was color be pink, could be. 
If I'm wrong and you've seen it, you could correct me down in the comments. So we do see Vanessa post up and she looks wonderful. And she's at, I think Jojo and Tanisha's kind of Airbnb situation. And Cree comes on over and they start talking. <sighs> they talk a little bit about her surgery, but what they're there to talk about is Miss Brianna. So she plays the live for Tanise and Vanessa and Vanessa's like, it kind of sounds like she's answering people's questions, which she was. And was it Vanessa or Tanise? One of them was kind of like weirded out that she kind of clumped all the Simmons together, which I mean, really who cares? And Jojo comes in later like, it's the Simmons, like the Obamas. And Jojo was like, surprise surprise brianna's talking about somebody like this is what brianna does and i hate when people do that like oh that's just how they are but in this situation it's the truth Cree don't have to accept it she don't gotta like it but that's facts no printer so jojo is talking to her like listen i know you're a tough girl i know you're a tough girl but basically you don't want it like this is what brianna does and so i mean she could do this all day and all night so i like i would just kind of just let it go we know Cree. she's not about to let it go speaking of miss brianna she is hosting a gig where she's asked to perform and i mean she sound a little raspy but she was smoking as she was singing and i would love to hear brianna's music as an artist i don't know if i'm the only one i'm not interested in hearing egypt i'm not interested in hearing sam i don't even know about jojo and eric but i would like to hear brianna's music but like i said before because angela talking about she want to make a song we ain't seen angela in three episodes if it's a bop or if it's something i can i'm a groove to it regardless Anywho, Sequoia is the only one there because you know Brianna don't fool with a lot of people outside of Twist. So they sit down and they're chopping it up. And she was hoping that Tiny would be there because she says, you know, Tiny is like the big sis. But Sequoia is telling her the situation with Tiny, her mom, and I almost said Twist, and Lazy. And Brianna's like, can I be frank with you? Like, that's that lady business. And she was right she was kind of telling her you got to think of what your mom's been through and sequoia gave her perspectives and all of that and brown was like okay i won't push you anymore but you know just know brianna wanted her to let her mama breathe that's what I, that's what i think i said in another one of my recaps so sequoia she is going to be having a skate party later in the episode but we see lazy he comes over to see tiny at her little establishment and he brings her some flowers and i thought that was really sweet and honestly i love the vibe between the two of them it's just a grown ass just chill cool type of vibe just real mature I, you know i'm 40 plus so you know it's just my type of steez so they're talking about the whole sequoia thing and sequoia was a little disrespectful in her delivery and i don't remember if tiny told him that but he was like is the problem that we didn't tell her or is the problem of who it is and she's like it's both because he says that he told her to tell her a long time ago and she didn't but she is happy to be free and to have gotten it all out and not to be you know lurking around in the shadows and not to be nobody's secret and i get that so i think tiny said that maybe he should have a talk with her and he's down for it so it's this skate party and everybody's there yes i mean everybody is there except for angela which i said we haven't seen miss angela since episode one but everybody's there and they looking all cute and they got their little short shorts on and their little thick thighs save lives yes god um <laughs> but nobody can skate except for sequoia and i was just like I guess so Sequoia is doing what she do and flirting with twist the irony so child twist is like she want me and I kind of want her but she's the weekend he not trying to have her Monday through you know Thursday I guess child. if she watches this back Sequoia I mean if you want to give him that's up to you but girl girl 
So what a difference a day makes with Tanise and Sequoia. They're hugging and they're making nice and everybody's doing good. Brianna comes in and she's, you know, trying to get her, well, she was already there, but she's trying to get her skates from the area where Cree was sit. And then she's like, excuse me, love. And she gets her skates and she goes on about her business and Cree is like, because now Cree is the one with a little attitude. And they're like, well, you know, that was nice. And, you know, Sequoia, she gave a little speech that she was happy that everyone was there, even though some of them hadn't gotten along in the past. We're going, you know, put the big girl and big boy pants on and play nice. Well, I said, should say big girls because the guys usually don't have any contention like the ladies have. But I digress. So they start chitting and chatting and Cree asks Sequoia what happened at Lazy's party. And Sequoia's like, you know, my mom is causing problems to me. And she starts talking about getting new management and she brings up that, you know, her and Lazy been sneaking and seeing each other and that's her mom and that's her mentor and blah, 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 blah. You know how this one goes. So Cree's like, listen, I get it. And I think she did say something about comparing parents, but anyway she was saying that your parents are in the limelight and we've all seen your parents on I think it was couples therapy and you know I'm gonna go back and watch it because I probably watched it while it was on because I was big into that but I don't remember it at all which girls memories a little anyway your parents are in the limelight and I know how it goes and I know you love your dad and it's good to love your dad but basically you were grown up now so you got to take a step back and look at it from that perspective and just know that your mom deserves better and she doesn't want to be loved like that anymore and she was 110 percent absolutely right tiny in fact had tried to tell some of her tell her some of this in the last episode because she was basically like you're not with your kids father so like things don't work out we move on it's okay and it was right message wrong messenger because sequoia didn't receive anything that Cree was saying and she was like I don't see how our fathers are like I want to say it was over her head but it wasn't over her head like I said it was the right message wrong messenger so it doesn't matter if your dads are alike or not what she was saying was actual factual and something you should listen to but Sequoia is not ready to let her feelings go about the situation I even think Cree brought up something about the substance abuse but on over to twist because he is trying to get miss Cree and miss Brianna united so he has a little talk with I think it was Brianna he brings Cree over he leaves the two of them to talk and Brianna's like I mean what is the problem and I was like and then they kind of talk it back and forth and Brianna's like I joke that's what I do and Cree's like yeah but you don't know me so <sighs> child it was a whole lot of something and a whole lot of nothing all in one whole time and even early in the episode Brianna keeps talking about in the confessionals how big Cree is and I'm like Brianna you're not a little girl either but I mean Cree is very tall child I aspire I wish I could have been that tall in my life but she's talking about how big she is and she don't trust her as far as she can throw and she can't throw to be but anywho Cree don't receive it anyway but she keeps it cute because she's like Brianna's been drinking so she's painted dust and they kind of go on their own way and just keep it moving and they keep it cute for this episode because everybody kind of thought that they were going to get into it but looking at next episode I think that's going to be next episode so Sequoia she ends up talking to Twist about her mom and Lazy and then she was bringing up the whole thing like I don't want my mom to be with a rapper he was like don't do that I'm a rapper and you want me and she's like <laughs> I do and that's why I said irony just a few minutes earlier because while you don't want your mom to be with a rapper you are on this man's uh, okay and like I said if you just want to give it up and you know not be in a relationship that's your business you grown go ahead baby girl do your thing but anywho lazy he decides to show up and she was like who invited him Eric did you invite him so they kind of tip on off to let the two of them talk he's like oh what this is invite only and she was like yeah but Lazy so smooth. Even though Tiny was calm when she talked to her, Lazy's not so smooth. She not giving Lazy that energy, energy that she was giving her mama last episode. So she goes down this line again. You're my mentor and it's not cool to do business and you're with my mom and she hasn't even got divorced yet. And he like, it ain't gonna last for, <laughs> forever. But he was basically saying to her, and I think these two have been together like a year or two, like, 
I'm still going to be here, your family, to give you good advice. And honestly, if he hasn't given her bad advice and she hasn't seen a change in him, I know she says the mom hasn't been around. Maybe it's not that big of a de- big, big of a deal. Like I said, I get it because you're mixing business with personal. <sighs> if it does affect it, then I guess break. Never mind. Let's just move on. Let's just move on. So he says that they've been friends for two decades. It hasn't affected the business. And she's like, well, maybe I need a new mentor. She just keeps throwing this out. I don't know if she threw it out with him. She threw it out with the mom. I don't know if she's looking for a reaction or what the plan is with that. But Ty ain't really giving one and Lazy ain't giving her one either. She has mixed emotions. He still feels like he can still give her good advice. And then Sequoia brings up her dad, how her dad is like in limo, limbo, because he's still holding on to getting back to Tiny. Ma'am, that is your dad's problem. That has nothing to do with you and you need to stay out of it because he has the complete audacity. Like how much more was that lady really supposed to take? But we're going to end that part right there. Lazy, you know, he's kind of like, it is what it is. And she starts up with the whole rapper thing again. And he's like, listen, your mom is i don't remember if he said he loves loves the mom but she's like she's beautiful she's smart they have a lot in common and he's he plans to protect her heart he's not the lazy that he was at 20 and he wants what's best for her and she's like she's like okay well y'all still nasty and basically she tells him she's still gonna have her eye on him and that is where we end the episode and here is the reality on reality TV. And this is what happens. Just a quick little insight to how my head works sometimes. It's, some, it's sometimes, because sometimes it's other issues that affect me. But reality shows, sometimes it's like this. You watch the trailer, and a trailer be so hell exciting, and you be excited for the season, and every episode just don't give. But reality shows, real life. Real life is not interesting every single time. So the next episode looks like it's going to be a little more interesting because it's interesting because we're going to have that, you know, that little argument tension between Brianna and Cree. And not that we want them fighting all the time, but it's just, I don't know, they need to put, put these shows together a little bit, you know, better in my opinion, if you ask me. But get down in the comments and let me know what were your thoughts on the episode and join me back here for my recap of episode five. <laughs> Until then, I'll see you next time. Peace.